Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to fight a superior enemy. It starts with a story. Imagine that you live in the middle of the farm and your enemy lives on the farm next to you and both of you have farms which are the same size, let's say 100 acres, okay? And you live in a world without police or law enforcement, like there's just two of you guys around. And since your neighbor is stronger than you and he's your enemy, one day he comes and says, okay, so I have a hundred acres and you have a hundred acres. How about we do a deal where I take 50 acres from your land or 10 acres from your land. And that's it. Like I will not kill you, but I will take some of your land and you being the weaker person, you agree. Okay, fine. I'm weaker. I'm going to get die if I don't agree to this. Okay. So I'll give you 10 acres of my land. Then one year later, he comes back and says, hey, give me 20 more acres of your land. And at the end of the day, you are eventually going to be left with no land because you're the weaker person and the stronger person is taking your land step by step, slowly, slowly, slowly. But one day, the stronger person, he falls sick. He gets COVID, let's say. And he's sick in his bed. And now you have two options. You can either go to him and say, okay, give me my farmland back because now you're the weaker one or you have the option of going and killing him, which is the wiser option to pick. And I would say the wiser option to pick is to kill him because if you don't kill him, he's going to come back again once he's healed and he's going to take everything back from you and he might kill you. So not killing him is stupidity. So your logical response should be to kill him, take what's yours, take what's his, because if you don't, it's not going to end well for you. And that is essentially the essence of historical war, where one enemy is taking your land slowly, 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 and then you have an opportunity to take it back. Do you compromise or not? Because if you compromise, eventually that guy is going to be back and he's going to be back for more because now his ego is hurt and he wants to make a point or you could just kill him, kill them all and be done with it. And now you never have to worry about that enemy and you have that land for you. So here is one takeaway. Firstly, the first takeaway is that the weaker guy doesn't go to war, war comes to him. So being weak, being unwilling to go to war invites stronger people to come and take over you simply because they know that it's going to be really easy to take over you and you won't be able to put up a fight. So being willing to go to war is going to prevent war in the first place. Lesson number two is that this is the importance of being strong and kind of somewhat having a, an image for being crazy. There is a lot of value in having a reputation for being extreme and crazy and being willing to fight along with it. Because if you take, for example, the history of the Assyrian Empire, what would they do? When a city rebelled in their empire, they would go and essentially flay every single person and put their skin on a tower and the person's like skinless body would be hung in a public place for days and people, everyone could see it. And because they were so brutal, cities would rarely rebel because they know that rebellion will cause this. So if they knew that some group was rebelling, they would the city people themselves will quell the rebellion for the empire. They knew that the city people itself will quell the rebellion for the empire simply because they know what would happen in case of an actual rebellion successfully taking place. So here is where the reputation for being crazy comes in, where if people know that fighting with you is not worth it, it's going to bring crazy things to them. They are not going to fight with you in most cases. And you end up in a situation where you have created so much peace simply because you are so crazy. For example, why do we not have a World War III? And the reason is that today we have nuclear weapons and people have nuked Japan twice in the past. And that the fear of being nuked keeps people from fighting a third world war. So nuclear weapons, despite being the craziest weapons in the world, kill so many people. They've saved so many lives by simply making sure war doesn't happen again because the cost of war is so high. And fourthly, and this one is important, 
Never compromise with a known enemy, especially when you know that the known enemy is compromising with you only because of a temporary weakness. Because a temporary weakness is going to go away and then the enemy is going to pounce on you, especially if you're weaker. So if you're going to fight, it's best to kill that person or like defeat them completely so that you don't have to worry about their revenge. So that's how I would recommend dealing with a superior enemy. When you fight, you fight to kill, you fight to win and crush completely. And you don't just fight for a compromise because fighting for a compromise is going to pounce back on you. It's going to backfire. You must not compromise with an enemy when they're sick because the sickness will go away. If an enemy is crippled, on the other hand, then you might be willing to compromise. Because crippledness is forever, sickness is not. For Life Math Money, this is your host Harsh Strongman. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and let me know what you thought in the comments below. I always love reading your comments. And make sure that you hit the notification bell because that will notify you when a future video comes out and they come out regularly. Have a great day and I will talk to you in a couple of days.